What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts, and I'm back with another Texans film breakdown. Today, we are going to be breaking down rookie second round pick Ross Blacklock, and shoutouts to those who recommended him will be after the film. Defensive tackle was a huge hole on the defense after letting DJ Reader walk in free agency, and Blacklock is looking to fill that gap. He's a freak athlete and can stuff the hell out of the run day one, and I'm super excited for his future with us because his potential is really high. So if you enjoy the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Also, I made a quick survey for y'all to give your feedback on my channel and give your input on what type of content you want to see during the regular season. The link will be in the description. I would really appreciate it if you guys could just take a couple minutes to fill it out. I really want to input your ideas. Alright, let's break down the film of Ross Blacklock because the film don't lie. So the main reason the Texans drafted Blacklock was to add an elite run stuffer. And there's a lot that goes into run stuffing, but Blacklock is very fundamentally sound. The first thing we'll talk about is his leverage. He consistently plays with low pad level and the best leverage of any defensive tackle that was drafted last year in my opinion. Leverage is so key for a defensive lineman because the low man wins. And if you're able to stay low, that's how Blacklock is able to be powerful and take on double teams and not get driven backwards. And that ability really helps him just live in the backfield. On this one, he fires off the ball and stays low. Then he pops up just slightly to swim over the center and defeat the block. But then boom, he's back to playing low and that's how he's just able to bully this offensive lineman out of the way and make the tackle. Consistency is going to be a word I use a lot to describe Blacklock and the most consistent part of his game is his leverage. And I love that. That's step one to being a great DT. Now the next thing I want to look at is his ability to take on double teams. He did it tons at TCU and he'll be doing it tons for us as well. There's two ways you can take on a double. You can take on one guy at a time or you can just shoot into the middle of the double team and try and occupy both guys. Blacklock takes the latter approach even though it can be tougher and it works really well for him because of his leverage. He has great burst off the snap and that also always seems to catch offensive linemen off guard. That ability to be first off the snap makes it tough because even if the O-lineman is playing low, he will always be lower. He looks like he's doing a damn yoga pose right now and look how he drives back the offensive line, not the other way around. So Blacklock is someone who he's not going to fill the stat sheet and that's completely okay because he's always going to be doing his job and making it easier on everyone else. He's someone who does the dirty work and is a bully at the line of scrimmage. So if he's not racking up the tackles like some other rookie defensive linemen and the media is saying he sucks, he was overrated, he's too high of a pick, don't believe it. That's just not who he is. Just like how Reader never really stuffed the stat sheet either, that's just the role that they play, but Blacklock plays that role to a T, and you need those guys on your team to have a successful team defense. And so like I said, consistency is a big talking point, and he consistently was able to hold double teams, not allow push, and have his linebackers run free, and that's great. But what separates the great from the elite run stuffers is being able to make those plays on your own, shedding double teams, and that's when you become a real game plan wrecker. And so Blacklock definitely showed the potential to do that. You know, it just wasn't as consistent as his ability to hold doubles, which makes sense because it's obviously harder to split a double team and make a tackle. You know, that's a rare ability, but Blacklock, because of his leverage, because of his hand placement, and because of how violent he plays, he's able to do it. I call him a bully because he's like that older kid on the playground who's just beaten up on some poor kids or some offensive lineman in this case. He's just physically dominating. And here's one of my favorite plays of his because he shows an ability to recover when things don't go perfectly. And against NFL competition, things aren't always going to go perfectly. So look how low he is at first. That's great. But then the center, he gives him a good shove and he gets high here. But Blacklock doesn't get washed out of the play. And that's because he plants his left leg in the dirt and then his right leg as well. And uses that as power to reestablish his low pad level, drive forward and make the tackle. That's just a great job to recover when things weren't looking good for him. And before we move on, here's just a fun play I found where he dealt with three blocks on this play. Not one, not two, but three. That's how much of a problem he was for opposing offenses. And when you dedicate three blocks to one guy, it opens things up for everyone else. Blacklock is really just a force in the middle of the defense. His pure brute strength is much needed in our division. When we got to run against Derrick Henry, Marlon Mack, and Jonathan Taylor, and even Leonard Fournette, it combined six times a year. So the next thing that makes him such a good run defender is his athleticism. He's very quick off the snap and he also shows good lateral movement, but it's his burst right here that helps him blow up the play. Texas is trying to set up a power run to the right of the defense, but Blacklock is able to single-handedly stop it. He's so fast off the snap that he pushes this left guard into the pulling right guard and also slows down the tight end. 
All of this stops the running back from hitting the hole like he wants to, and because the tight end isn't able to get out and block, this linebacker is completely free and makes the tackle. But make no mistake, this doesn't happen without Blacklock being the athletic beast that he is. Now like I mentioned before, he's great at covering space laterally, and where that helps in the run game is against zone block and when the offensive line is trying to reach block him. And this is pivotal to shutting down a run game because before we talked about you know high low leverage, but there's also like left and right leverage, and as a DT you want to steal the leverage of the offensive line and force everything back inside. So on this play here, you can see that the Oklahoma offensive line, they're trying to run block to the left. And so they're trying to cross the face of the defensive lineman and get to that outside shoulder of the left side because then they're able to angle their blocks better for the running back to open up lanes. However, Ross Blacklock, he's not having it. He makes sure that the center here is never able to cross his face and never able to angle him away out of the block. And as a result, he's able to actually push him backwards and into the play and just shut it down completely. And that's a freaky ability. For as great as Reader was, he wasn't this athletically gifted to be able to cover that much ground and not lose leverage against these reach blocks. And here's another matchup with one of the best centers in all of college football, Creed Humphrey. So again, they're trying to run to the left and Humphrey wants to essentially be blocking this half of Blacklock. But Blacklock actually turns it around on him and he's the one who actually blocks that half, getting that outside leverage to the left. And then at this point, he senses that the cutback lane is opening up because the Oklahoma offensive line was able to make it to the second level. So he knows he can't just sit here and he has to make a play. So he stops running to the left and gains inside leverage instead, getting off of the block and pushing the running back into Jalen Hurts, the quarterback, just shutting down the run. And this next play is one of the best examples of what I'm talking about. He stacks, reads, and sheds the block really well, and I can't tell exactly whether he's two-gapping or not, but it definitely seems like he could be, and we ask our interior defensive lineman to two-gap all the time. So from this angle, you can see how much ground he has to cover horizontally, and I want to emphasize this because this ability is not normal. He's doing like essentially defensive slides like in basketball, look how low he's getting and then just sliding his feet to the side. And he's doing that while the offensive line is just sprinting as fast as they can to try and beat him to that landmark and try and get that outside leverage. And then this is the part that I love. So first he stacks the block really well, hands to the chest of the offensive line to be powerful, extending his arms, locking them out so the offensive line can't get to him. And here's why I think he might be too gapping because he doesn't overextend and try to shoot this outside gap right away. If he was only playing one gap, then that would be his only responsibility and he would overplay that, right? But because at this point you can see that he's watching the running back in the backfield and there's such a wide gap to his left, that would be very, very easy for the running back to make one cut and hit that hole for a big gain. So he needs to stay disciplined and cover both of these gaps. Then once he reads that the running back is going to the right, he sheds the block and makes the tackle. That's as fundamentally sound as you're gonna get. And he pairs it with his great athleticism. That's just a super underrated but impactful play, especially for how he translates to the NFL. Now for as great of a run defender that Blacklock is, if he can show something, anything in the pass rushing game in his rookie season, we've got ourselves a young star. And he showed a good promise at TCU getting three and a half sacks in his last year. You know, stats are one thing, but the film don't lie. And he's got a very high ceiling for pass rushing, mainly because of his athleticism. His quickness and burst off the snap really catches offensive linemen off guard. And he's able to pair that together with some effective moves as well. Starting with some simpler moves, then we'll work our way up, and here he shows a nice dip move to get by the O-line. He dips his shoulder and turns his chest away from the offensive lineman, which reduces the surface area that they have to punch Blacklock. And as we've seen, if you can get into someone's chest, you're going to be more powerful. So Blacklock takes away how he can be beaten from the O-line, and this is just an instant pressure, man. But a dip is usually never enough to beat an O-lineman, and so Blacklock pairs it with a rip move. Here you're going to see that he dips his inside shoulder yet again. Now he doesn't turn his chest away as drastic as before, but that's because at this point he's able to beat the hands of the offensive lineman using the rip. He forms his arm in an L shape and rips it up underneath the O-line's armpit area so that if you don't let go of him, he's going to rip your f***. Arm and I love that he's able to rush with a plan. That's my biggest thing I look for in a pass rusher. Do you have good technique and know what move you're going to throw or are you just relying on athleticism? And Blacklock's certainly a great athlete, but he doesn't rely on that. And here's another clear view of his rip move and he gets the sack. You can see how violent he shoots up his hand to get that offensive lineman to stop trying to push him out of the play because he kind of wins initially with his quickness. But here the O-line's trying to recover that last ditch effort and then boom, just knock that hand out the way. You ain't got nothing on Blacklock. 
Blacklock. Another move that Blacklock loves to use is his swim move, where he's gonna bring his arm up and over top of the offensive lineman and beat him that way. You're gonna see him sell it to the left, then bring his right arm over top, and man, he does it so quick. The O line doesn't know what hit him, man. He gets the pressure. Then adding to the swim, he uses a nice swipe move here with his right arm. Then he swims over with that same arm. He's able to flip his hips towards the quarterback, which is the key thing, and he causes that Aaron throw, man. He's also got a nice pull and swim where he shoots his hands into the chest of the offensive lineman, showing a bull rush, and then he pulls on the O-line's jersey with his left hand, yanking them forward, and then swimming over with his right. That's just beautiful how he's able to link them together and time it up nicely. Now, this is the best of them all, and if he can get this move down on a consistent basis, ooh, watch out, man. So he uses a club swim and then rip as well, putting everything together that we've seen. And first, it's hard to see, but he clubs with his left arm to beat the O-line's initial punch. Then he swims over with his left arm and gets by the first offensive lineman. But he draws a second, and then you can see him here using his left arm. He's trying to rip up and get the O-line's arm off of him so he can be free, but it just doesn't work this time. And so if he can get the timing of those three moves down and linked up perfectly, it's over, man. It's over. I mean, he's already forcing double teams in the run and passing game now. This dude's a force. Blackhawk's best football is ahead of him, and his flashes are crazy, man. He just splits this double team with one arm holding back each guy. Like, this is one of the most absurd plays I've ever seen. This ain't normal. Before we move on, I just want to throw in the sequence real quick where Blacklock plays pissed off, man. He gets held in an awkward situation here, and he doesn't like it one bit. And so on the ensuing play, he gets riled up and plays with some edge, some fire. And I love that, man. He's going to shoot his hands right into the face mask of that same offensive lineman that was holding him and then just yank him to the ground. Oh, man, we're going to get a beautiful view of it here. And, and this is super dangerous, violent and a penalty, all that. But man, I fucking love it. He's a bully, man. He don't care about your feelings. You piss him off. You better get ready for the repercussions, man, because he's coming for your head. And I love that edge. I think our team needs more fire and more fight like that. Now, no player is perfect, and with Blacklock, the biggest thing is really just being consistent. Specifically in the pass rushing game, we saw great, great flashes, but that's what they were. I mean, they were flashes. You know, if you want to talk about what we get on a consistent basis, is someone who looks a bit clunky at sometimes with his moves. He's not able, always able to time up his hands with his feet and get by his man. And that spin that we just saw, that looked slow, and the hand placement was all over the place. We also saw flashes of him using a swipe move, right? That was real great. But here's a great example where if he if that initial swipe misses, he's screwed. He's not consistent with his counters. And it looks like he's predetermined his move here as he swipes, then instantly swims with his right arm. And, you know, we saw this move work before, but it only works if that swipe lands. And so like I talked about before with rushing with a plan, that's important, but you've also got to be able to read and react to the offensive lineman in front of you and see that if plan A didn't work, if that swipe move didn't work, we can't go to our next move with the swim. We got to try something else. We got to go to plan B instead. Here's another example where Blacklock uses a nice cross chop, but then he just can't finish the sack. And again, it's the predetermination of moves that gets him here. So on this first move, the cross chop, he uses his inside arm, to chop down on their outside arm, and he defeats it at first. But then the O-lineman, he recovers well, he gets his hand back into the chest of Blacklock, and at this point, a rip move would be perfect to get that arm off of him. And he's already got his arm under the armpit in perfect position for that rip. We know he can execute a rip move, we've seen him do it time and time again, but he just needs to be more reactionary with it now and consistent with it. You know, not only using that rip move when he's predetermined it before his rush, but also when he sees that he could use it throughout his rush. The other area he can be more consistent is with finding the ball and getting off of blocks. We saw before that he was able to split double teams or shed blocks and make a tackle, but while there were great games, there were also many games where he just disappeared for long stretches, and that can't happen at the next level. You can't not find the ball. You can't be late by a split second either because that's all it takes for NFL talent to run right by you. Here he stacks the block really well, but he just can't get off of it in time. And I get that this is pretty nitpicky, but I just want my top rookie to be very consistent in his play. All right, that'll do it for my Ross Blacklock film breakdown. Honestly, at first, I wasn't very high on the pick, but the more and more I rewatched his film, this is my third time now, I fell in love with him and appreciated his game even more. He showed the ability to do everything, and he's still a young guy. The consistency will come over time, but his ceiling is super high. 
So thank you to those who recommended him. So shout out to Manel Ponte, Manuel Garfio, Kenneth, Gonzo the Great, Dagada the Food. The, man, you messing me up with that one, my bad. <laughs> Candlestick Boy, Roberto Acosta, and Scott Borger. Or Borger. I apologize if I pronounced anyone's names wrong or missed your Blacklock comments, but I appreciate y'all and love interacting with y'all in the comments. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Also, if you could take just a couple minutes to complete my survey, that would be awesome. I really want to hear from y'all and take your input to heart. I want you to have input on what you see on this channel. So if you want specific content for when the season starts, this is your way for the, your voice to be heard all right this was jordan or texans thoughts hope you enjoyed and come back for more videos every tuesday wednesday and thursday tomorrow is zach cunningham versus derrick henry and thursday is jonathan grenard so take care everyone and remember the film don't lie